Good morning. Uh, excuse me, I, I cannot found I cannot found the the Javier. Ayúdame control la. Uh... Ah, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Today we start with a uh, super resolution microscopy. Uh, of course, you will have next week. Not, okay, the last week will come a professor from the laboratory of uh, Stefan Hell, and he will be teaching about state microscopy, about resolve, span, and all this technique. Of course, I am not expert in this field, but I, I will try to do all my best. It's, the idea is you to, to capture the, the basics and to be ready for the next week to, uh, to receive more deeper information about this topic. Okay, let's we start uh, looking at this picture about the scales, the scales uh, in, in microscopy, and which techniques are able to resolve their uh, details. Uh, as we know, Electron mi microscopy can reach the, the lower uh, limit there. Uh, we have also uh, near field, PAL, FIPAL, and STORM. This is a technique developed by uh, Stefan Hell also. Uh, stimulate emission depletion. This is what I will uh, mainly concentrate today. Uh, and other techniques. Here we have confocal microscopy. You can see here. Uh, the limits. Uh, the question is uh, why? Why? Why uh, uh, super resolution microscopy? If we have even uh, electron microscopy, uh, the problem is that when you want to look inside the cell, uh, you, look, you need light microscopy. You cannot use uh, electron microscopy there. You cannot see there, and even you can kill cells. Due to that, is mandatory uh, super resolution microscopy to look inside the cell. Let's uh, we look at this picture also uh, about the size of various biological entities and also about the the, the diffraction limit and uh, starting again with this very important equation. We know that this is the limit of resolution that light microscope can reach, uh, it's impossible to go down using the, the shorter wavelength, the higher numerical aperture objective. But uh, what uh, super resolution uh, microscopy did is exactly to break this limit. How to do that? Uh, in, in this example, we, ha we have here, of course, and from here, the limit of the, uh, of the resolution in line microscope. If you have, for example, microtubes here, these are molecules inside microtubes, uh, and you need to resolve with light microscope, you will have there a lot of molecules. In fluorescent microscopy, I, I say yesterday, what you normally do is to excite the sample through the, also the microscope objective with the light that match very well with the absorption of the uh, specimen or green fluorescent protein attached to this specimen. And then you get the fluorescence of this sample. You collect this fluorescent and you create the image of this region. In this case, let's we have fluorescent of these all molecules. We have all together, we are receiving this information together, and it's impossible to resolve single molecules here. There is no way for that. Let's, let's we concentrate here. This is the problem. Not discernible, this molecule. 
This is the skin, the fur, the process of uh, fluorescing. We have the excitation beam. The fluorescing has normal uh, nanosecond time relaxation. It's very short time relaxation. And in this case, in this case, let's we uh, move further and we select, this is trivial, we select this region and we avoid this region. And now, okay, excuse me, okay, okay, in a state microscopy, <coughs> this is a, the most important slide, in a state microscopy what we do is to keep dark these molecules and we select the region in which, from which we want to obtain the fluorescence. How to do that? In, in a state microscopy, we excite with, depending on the absorption of the green fluorescent protein you have there, with green light, for example, and with a, a second beam, the state beam, that in this case, or usually, is red, red beam, with a donut at the center, you select the region of this donut using a face plate. It's a variable uh, piece of glass that allow you to control this uh, region. You select here, for example, three molecules. In this region, in this region, in the rest of the of the of the specimen, you silent because because you produce, you stimulate these molecules to emit. And as we have the, the difference between, between the fluorescent, the relaxation time of fluorescent, and the stimulated vision, is, uh, there is a big difference in, in, time, in time relaxation. Also, the direction of propagation, as you know, when you produce a stimulated vision, the light producing, or the, the, the photon generated by the stimulated emission, has the same duration of these photons. But in fluorescent, we have emission in all directions. This means that we can separate this process in time and in space also. Then, we induce here these molecules to emit by stimulate emission. And these molecules remain in the excited state. And they will relax with this relaxation time, and will emit fluorescent. Then we capture the fluorescent of this molecule, and of course, we can also reduce this region, as I say you, controlling, but controlling the intensity of this beam. The intensity of this state beam is controlled, as you can see here. This is the, this is the, the, the probability of fluorescence, okay? We keep these molecules here in this region. But there is a level, a, 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 a level here of, of intensity, this is a treasure of the intensity, after what we have enough number of photons for producing or silent the rest of the molecules. There is a limit here. When we go farther away, this region, the intensity, the intensity or the size of this region is controlled by this intensity. Okay? This is the, this is the, 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 the key point in there. And with this, we control this region. We can select only one molecule also. And this is the main uh, reason for that. Then this equation is, is, uh, has to be modified modify for a uh, state microscopy. I will, I will show you now uh, the, the new equation that uh, Stefan Hell uh, developed. But how to do, how to do or to get the image of, uh, of this specimen, of these micro, micro, micro tube, tubers? What normally you can do is to move this step beam. You move this step beam. Here, in the meantime, these molecules, or one molecule, is 
uh, emitting flore fluorescence, you capture this, the rest of the, mole uh, the molecule are silent, and then you move the state beam to the next molecule, you capture the image, this on, off, on, off, and you get the complete image of this uh, specimen. This is the way how in state microscopy you can uh, produce a very good image. And now uh, we can see here, you can see here, I wanted to show, uh, uh, give me a, a moment, okay. I think, I think, okay, okay. I have to, to add, excuse me, I have to add this equation before, but doesn't matter. Now, in the uh, equation for the, for the resolution limit, we have an additional, an additional uh, term. We have the ratio between the intensity, this is the, 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 the threshold, and the intensity of the state beam. We need a lot of photons at the same time to produce uh, or to silence the rest of the molecules. As you can see there, the, the resolution will be increased, will be increased by increasing the intensity of the state beam here, because this is the, the, the inverse. As I say you, selecting this intensity, we select the region of, uh, of, the res of, of this resolution limit, and in this case, can, uh, can reach, uh, you, can, uh, you can detect single molecules, you can, uh, Stefan Hell reported uh, a, a nanometers, a nanometer uh, resolution. I think we can, we can go down till five nanometers. There are some reports about five nanometers also, okay? Then, as I say you, moving this, this beam, we select molecule by molecules and we build an image of the, of the, of the specimen. Okay, in this uh, figure, we show a single molecule producing uh, fluorescence. It's clear how a state microscopy works? Any question? Okay, let's we uh, look now at the experimental uh, setup. How to, to do a state microscopy and how is the experimental setup? Okay. It's similar to uh, what uh, we have in, in fluorescent microscopy. We have uh, the fluorescent, the excitation beam, in this case green, the microscope objective, we have here the sample, the specimen. Again, of course, we have here the, the CCD camera for capturing the, the image. And additionally, you, we have the state beam to produce to produce the uh, depletion of these excited uh, molecules. And this is, this is the, the, the scheme of uh, what uh, we obtain there. We have depletion of the stimulation that is a little shift in wavelength in relation to the normal fluorescence. As I said you before, we can separate these two processes not only in space, but also in time, because they have different relaxation times, okay? Let's now, uh, we look at some uh, application of the state microscopy. This is confocal microscopy. As we know, in confocal microscopy, this, this is a molecule, and this is a molecule, they are, they are, uh, uh, emitting light at the same time. Due to that, there is not good resolution here. But in this case, as we silent molecule, then we <coughs> take the, the fluorescing of, the, of this molecule and so on, we can have very, very high resolution here at the level <coughs> of single molecules. This is another uh, application and uh, comparison between a step microscopy and confocal uh, microscopy. Here, uh, it's more clear, this. And now, 
some specific uh, application. In this case, this is a nuclear uh, pore uh, complex and single, single molecule here in this envelope. You can see here, very, very clear, these single molecules using uh, yellow fluorescent proteins. <coughs> they attach yellow fluorescent proteins to these molecules and are able to detect uh, fluorescence is in, in single molecules. This is another uh, example. Uh, this is a paper, of course, published by Stefan Hell, in which in the neuromuscular uh, junction, <coughs> we can detect also uh, single molecule is in, uh, using different, di different uh, green fluorescent proteins that before was not, uh, they were not able to detect this with confocal microscopy. This is uh, some application uh, uh, of a step in neurophysiology. As you can see there, the, the hippocampal uh, organotype slides, they can look at this in real time, in, in 3D. Now, this is very exciting application in, in living mouse uh, brain, looking at the cortical neurons, expressing also by uh, uh, yellow fluorescent proteins in real time. They obtain very good image of this region. You can see uh, in YouTube this, this video. They are uh, able, even in the Stefan Hell web page. And this uh, cone here, is moving in real time, and they are able to look there the interaction between uh, between these uh, even molecules inside this uh, this cone. Okay. Now, uh, where is the problem with uh, or the drawback of a state microscope? The question is that you need a lot of photons to excite the sample. And of course, you will have photo damage there and photo, bleach, photo bleaching of, the, of your sample. You need, in all the application of uh, using biological samples, you need, you need to keep some limit in which you cannot damage the, the, the specimen. And for that, they developed another technique that is called Resolve. It's again a step microscopy. But what they did there is to use to use green fluorescent protein with two metastable meta levels. Two metastable levels, as you can see here, they have long living time. The relaxation time is, is very long. And this gives you the, 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 the possibility, the possibility to use again state microscopy, but as you have longer relaxation time, you will produce this phenomena with lower intensity of the state beam. You can silence the rest of, of the molecules, and these molecules stay there in, in the region you select, stay there long time. And then, using this technique, they reduce a lot the, uh, uh, this uh, I, IS, the threshold. Then, using very, very low power, very low power exit, uh, step beam, they are able to have the same results. Then, there is not their uh, photo damage, photo bleaching, and uh, you can combine both techniques in this case. Of course, this, uh, this new kind of, uh, of uh, green uh, fluorescent protein, uh, protein uh, gave the possibility of this uh, new advance in state uh, microscopy. But also, it's possible to combine state microscopy with confocal microscopy. Because when you need to go deeper in the sample, you combine with, uh, using a pinhole in the same setup, and you can obtain image from uh, all the, the, the specimen in depth. 
combining state with confocal, you select the best region in, in, in deep, and with a step, you select there uh, specific molecules. This is another, an, another kind of technique they uh, develop. Okay? Now, uh, you can have a lot, a multiple poles there, and the image, you reduce even the time, because normally, normally uh, in, in a state microscopy, you use uh, pulse lasers to have high density of, of photons. But these techniques allow you to have multiple pulse without any kind of photodamage. The problem is photodamage, that you can have a lot of pulse, but without producing photodamage. But now, it's possible with this technique, okay? And this, we have also some application. This is now the, the, le the, the, the trezo. Now it's only some watts per uh, squ uh, square centimeter, and before it was a little uh, bigger, this, uh, this uh, quantity, okay? Now, uh, application, you can, this also, you can look at this paper here. In, in two hours scanning, there is not any photo damage. And this is very good. Okay? Now, I will uh, speak about another uh, technique that is called total internal ref uh, reflection, fluorescing, uh, turf microscopy. But before that, I want to show uh, some videos. One video in which you will look at this phenomena because we, we, know, uh, we need to know about total internal reflection, micro, uh, total internal reflection and, also, and also about evanescent, evanescent field. Maybe some of the students were in the lab and they, they know about this, but I want to show for, for all because it's, it's very, very basic uh, concept that we will use uh, here. Let me to show you. This is the example Freddy sent me. Very, very nice to understand total internal reflection. In total internal uh, uh, reflection, we have, we have uh, for example, uh, a glass, a medium with high reflective index, and we have air there, okay? And we know that under a specific angle, but this, in this case here, uh, this ray will be totally reflected. There is a specific angle for a specific relation between uh, these two media, depending on the refractive index of uh, the glass. But normally, we have, we have that not all the light is reflected, but is reflected, but at, at this border, at the limit, we have a vanishing field there that in this region, as we, as we will see now in this very nice example, see there, we have there a vanishing field and we can change, we can change the dip of this field changing a little this angle. We can change it and we will have there, in this surface, this evan evanescent field. This is what we will apply for this uh, kind of uh, super resolution microscopy using total internal reflection. Okay. 
We can control even micromet deep there. Na even nan nanometers controlling this angle. Then, let's, now we start with the applications. This uh, kind of uh, technique is very useful when uh, you look at, uh, for example, proteins in the membrane, mainly, because how, how these techniques work. Normally, you add the microscope slide, and the sample is there. The sample is there. The membrane of the cell, for example, is in contact with this slide. Then, controlling this angle, you only produce, produce fluorescence of these molecules that are very close to the surface because the, the vanessin field is only reaching this region and there is only threshold for fluorescing there controlling this angle. We will see how they, they do this experimentally. And we have now here very, very nice, very nice uh, example of this application. These this are uh, single molecules in the membrane of the cell and as we can see here, it's impossible to, to differentiate this using epifluorescent microscope. This is the, the, the idea. But how to implement this, this technique? Okay. Now, here, uh, some equation may be, you know, better the, or you will see this better in the, in the ANA conference. This is, this is the intensity of the evanescent field that we have in this region, when we add, when we add here the excitation beam, we have this evanescent field here. If we have a molecule here, this molecule will receive enough light and will have fluorescing. But this molecule here will be not excited. Then we have only fluorescing coming from this very, very, very thin region, okay? Even uh, there are some, <coughs> some examples in which they, uh, to test about this region, they introduce there some dyes. And you can see, looking at the fluorescence of this dye, the dip of this penetration and selecting the angle. Okay? This is uh, the experimental setup. Normally, there are different kinds of experimental setup. You have the, the excitation beam from here. You can use here a prism here that produce total internal reflection, but you will have in this region, the sample is here, of course, and in this region, uh, you produce the fluorescence of the, of the molecules attached to the microscope slide there. Here, again, this is a microscope. We have the, the objective. We collect this uh, fluorescent and produce an image here. This is uh, the, uh, one of the most useful uh, kind of uh, excitation. But also, we can use uh, this setup. In this case, we use a lens here that produce parallel beam of light in this region, but to have total internal reflection, we use uh, this setup in which the excitation beam is coming not through the center of the lens. It's coming here through this border, and this will produce total internal reflection there and also evan evanescent field in, the, in this region, okay? And also uh, moving this lens, you can control this, this angle, okay? This is another kind of a experimental setup. There are many, many uh, uh, different schemes here. This is, these are pre-based uh, total internal reflection configuration. In this case, we have this uh, setup in which we have, again, the focusing lens, but coming from the borders of the uh, uh, 
of the microscope objective. In this case, of course, we can control this angle moving these lengths. These lengths are, uh, are uh, set in a micrometric, micrometric uh, breadboard. Okay? This is a second setup using also here a prism. This is another kind of configuration. And this is also another kind of a configuration. This is the cover slip fixed to, to this and fixed to a prince. Okay? This is the focusing length. Again, the excitation beam coming from here. And here, we obtain total internal reflection. Okay? This is the uh, object is based without prism. It's another example. We use objectives with a high numerical uh, aperture. In this case, again, the beam coming from this side, not at the center, and in this way, coming from the back focal plane. Why back focal plane? Because there, if we have there, uh, we know that when a collimate beam, we have a collimate beam in the front focal plane, in the back focal plane, we, we get focusing. We use this. We focus here to have collimate beam because a good total internal reflection, uh, uniform. For that, we need a parallel beam of light. Okay? And of course, of course, we, we can, uh, under this configuration, control this, this angle of total internal reflection. OK. These are uh, another uh, configuration based on objective, not uh, prints. Of course, there are uh, some uh, advantages, some different, uh, using prints, prism, and, and objective, uh, uh, depending on the, on the, on the specimen and so on. Uh, it's better to use objective or, or prism, depending on the, also on the, on the penetration dip you will need there in your specific situation. This is, uh, in this case, we have the laser here. Again, the objective here. This is uh, using epi illu illu illuminator and filter cube here. And in this, <coughs> in this another case, we have another configuration. There are different configurations. This is uh, also another kind of uh, configuration here, using laser optical fiber here. But the idea is the same. The idea is to control this angle, you control the penetration depth, and you excite the molecules that are only attached to the surface of the slide. They, you can have there the sample in, 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 in culture media water, whatever you want, because it's possible using this setup. OK? Let's, uh, we look now at some application with STERF. You can use white light also for that. You can use laser also. You can see here the difference between EPI and total internal reflection uh, microscopy. You can look there. You can differentiate. Uh, single single uh, molecules at the surface of the microscope slide. This technique is mainly used for detecting uh, uh, membranes because you you can attach very very easily this membrane to the microscope slide. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's we conclude here with this technique. Uh, is small round motion of organelle toward or any way from the membrane. So the membrane events, we have, <coughs> we have exocytosis, cytoskeletal dynamics. We can study this process very easily. Uh, so microscopic membrane folding and indentation. Also, we can study kinetic rate of association, dissociation at the membrane, even in condition, in continuous presence of uh, fluorophore in bath, as I, as I say, you it's very useful 
for membrane studies. It's also useful in surface biochemistry, uh, single molecule fluorescent, low background, chemical uh, kinetics and, and diffusion at the, at the surface, and so on. I think, uh, because this lecture, I don't have more to teach for this, because you will have next week, of course, the, the lecture of a professor coming from the Stefan Hell Lab. We'll stop here. Maybe we can have some discussion. I don't know if uh, want to comment. You are expert also in this technique. We can discuss. I said you yesterday about the the this face place. Uh, we were speaking about this, yeah. but also about the tension of fluorescing. How to differentiate between the fluorescence and the depletion of the of the molecules. When you read, when you read paper, But the, the difference is not so much between the, the state being and, and the fluorescing, but there is, and you can. Yes. Uh, I suggest that you go there and speak Yes. So that Come on. Because he said that they, they cannot uh, hear there. Okay. Okay. Come on here. Come on here. Yes. Go there. 
Give me. Okay. It's broken. Oh, it's broken. We can use this. Okay. okay. Use a microphone, please. I'm not an expert. I <laughs> almost yeah. Okay. Really? Oh. To give you? Okay. You are helping me here because I am not expert on this. I did I my find. best. <laughs> I did my best, but he's expert. And no, my I... idea is you at least to know the basics. This is my idea. And you need to be visible to the recording okay. people. Come on. <laughs> come, come, okay, uh, come on here and explain. Thank you. I'm what not. I, I did not. You will do now. Uh, thank you. I'm not uh, an expert in this. Uh, <laughs> but, but you have a state by crossing. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, currently I'm uh, visiting. Uh, they have a state by <laughs> in the lab. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I explain. I'm, uh, uh, I'm currently a visiting researcher at the uh, University of uh, Amsterdam. Uh, there is a <coughs> research group, it's called uh, Physics of Living System, and uh, the <coughs> leaders are Erwin Peterman and Heis Voigt. Uh, I'm uh, <coughs> there just for two, uh, uh, two months. And uh, at that university, we, uh, we are going to uh, build a 3D state microscopy. <coughs> And uh, 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 um, uh, this uh, microscope, uh, in this microscope, there are uh, many aberrations. And uh, if you uh, uh, if you can uh, uh, correct aberrations, uh, you get better resolution. And uh, today, uh, people uh, try to correct this aberration by adaptive optics. <coughs> and uh, it's I think the uh, how to say it, it uh, may people may uh, usually say uh, 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 knowledge uh, edge or uh, uh, <coughs> okay uh, if uh, you ask uh, j j a specific uh, question I, I hope to answer okay uh, okay I, 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 okay with the fluorescent beam, and when the molecule is in excitated state, you have to stimulate it with the stead beam. It is that for produce uh, a stimulated emissions. Uh, the, the process to uh, the, the laser beam has uh, to uh, uh, have a, a specific synchronization for that, to, to produce that uh, phenomenon. Uh, how do you do that with, with this face plate? Is a common device or, or is a complex technology? How, how is uh, really this? This is the, the, the main uh, question there. How to do that using this face plate? As you see in the uh, lecture uh, by uh, Umberto, uh, you uh, need to uh, you need a uh, <coughs> intensity distribution. Yeah. For example, uh, in this uh, uh, example, <coughs> you need an uh, intensity distribution that, in the side, it's dark, and uh, around it, uh, it's uh, bright. Okay. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> if uh, you have this uh, intensity distribution, uh, by a stimulated emission, you uh, depleted this, uh, this uh, area around the center and just allowed the uh, fluorescence uh, beam to come out from the inside. Okay, so you need uh, this intensity distribution. Uh, and uh, <coughs> how to uh, create this intensity distribution, okay? Uh, in optics, uh, uh, phase is very important. If uh, you uh, manipulate the phase of light, you can uh, create any intensity distribution uh, as you want, okay? So, uh, 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 and, uh, an option is uh, this, that 
you uh, you uh, you have a, a trace back by some algorithms, for example. Normally, you can use this trace place is a variable uh, piece of glass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spatial light modulators also. There are many, many techniques for this. If uh, uh, it's just a, a, a device uh, that can be built, uh, for example, uh, just consider lateral uh, direction. Uh, uh, you need a, a, a circular uh, a disc, uh, for example, a glass. That uh, phase uh, phase uh, change uh, from, for example, here to uh, uh, again the f first point by uh, two pi uh, <coughs> amount. You, uh, you consider a, uh, a glass that has some coating. Just uh, that uh, when you start from the first point and uh, 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 around the circle, the, the phase uh, changes uh, uh, <coughs> continuously until 2, p, 2 pi, okay? If you uh, put this uh, phase plate uh, <coughs> in front of a, a parallel beam, uh <coughs> in the uh, focus uh, you uh, see the do not shape. This is for uh, lateral direction and if you want to have uh, uh, <coughs> axial uh, asset microscopy, you need just a phase plate that uh, <coughs> the, there are a pi phase in the center and uh, the, the, a, a pi phase in the center relative to uh, around the center, okay? Uh, These two phase plate uh, do your work. Yeah, looking at uh, looking at where the detector is, I would like to know what kind of uh, signal is it detected? Is it scattering or transmission or reflected intensity that is detected? The fluorescence. Yeah, from the molecule. As in normal fluorescent microscopy, it works in the same way. Okay. Usually, uh, uh, people uh, use a uh, single photon uh, counter, uh, for example, APD, avalanche photodiode. Uh, um, uh, and uh, yeah, 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 because uh, you have just uh, a few photons, and by uh, avalanche photodiode, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, amplify it and uh, detect uh, very good. <coughs> We are trying to uh, uh, to uh, build the setup, and uh, I think uh, every optical set setup is uh, uh, is uh, it seems simple <laughs> uh, on 
a slide on our uh, blackboard. The but is, is here in the face uh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, the, the the thing is very important is that. Uh, the uh, alignment of these uh, two beams, because uh, uh, if you you, you should uh, overlap the, the, these beams uh, uh, very uh, uh, precise in uh, lateral direction and axial direction. I mean the f uh, the excitation beam and the, the excitation beam or asset beam. Uh, if you do that very good, uh, you can. Uh, uh, you can obtain, uh, uh, for example, 10 nanometer resolution. And this is very important uh, in your uh, setup. <coughs> uh, and uh, if you, for example, f uh, want to uh, have a 3D step, the, uh, <coughs> the t uh, trick is that use uh, uh, polarization, polarization of the beam. Uh, you know that uh, 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 linear polarization uh, has two uh, component, S component and P component. Uh, you need just to uh, <coughs> to uh, 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 separate the uh, polarization, and each, in each uh, polarization you put a, a phase plate. Uh, in S polarization you put the two pi, and another you put the P pi, and again you. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you uh, overlap them, and by this technique you can uh, have a 3D step. Uh, <clears throat> and if you want to uh, correct the uh, aberration, it's uh, today expensive uh, because you need uh, an uh, SLM, a special light modulator. By this device you can uh, <clears throat> uh, f f uh, change the phase and uh, uh, and uh, reduce the aberration and get better resolution. But the aberration are due to the phase place and the spatial lane modulator because we have also additional aberration. If you could correct objective. Okay. If the, the aberration of the objective can be corrected by the uh, manufacturer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your, mean, your mean is aberration due to the a special lane modulator or to the face place? Uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> uh, it, this uh, aber aberration of the, the objective is correct, uh, is corrected when, uh, uh, but if you have a thick sample, uh, there are m uh, more aberrations. And uh, <coughs> uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, in the light pass, there are many optical al uh, elements that uh, uh, aberrated the beam. Okay, so uh, if you, uh, you put the SLM and uh, use a uh, feedback algorithm uh, based on image processing, uh, in uh, each uh, time you have the uh, the uh, every component of aberration by Zernik uh, component, and uh, then you can uh, <coughs> correct the aberration uh, to. Uh, to uh, to have a better resolution. And uh, what about to control uh, the, the position? The position of these molecules is also controlled by the position of the, the donor. Uh, in this case, to detect this position very, very precise, you follow the position, of course, of the donor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah um, uh, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, usually, uh, <coughs> the, the, um, you have two options: uh, uh, move the sample or move the uh, beam. Uh, uh, the beam. Um, usually, um, people prefer to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, scan the beam. Uh, uh, there is a, a, a scanner mirror, uh, piezo a scanner mirror in two uh, directions, uh, tip and tilt. Uh, to <coughs> scan uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, overlap beam, I mean. Uh, this, you follow the position. Yeah, 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 yeah. You uh, you uh, go uh, two dimensional, and uh, the sample uh, is uh, on a <coughs> piezo stage in uh, axial direction, and by this method you uh, get a 3D uh, image.
Yeah, I want to know whether the samples need special preparation and how they are done. Samples? The samples, whether they need special preparation. Yeah, whether you need to prepare the samples for the setup and how the preparation done. Okay. Uh, move the sample. Uh, this, uh, I, uh, you can uh, um, uh, put this uh, put the sample on a piezo stage, two-dimensional uh, sample holder that has a piezo stage in two directions. So you can move the sample. Uh, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, uh, you need uh, to uh, <coughs> uh, to attach floor for uh, to sample because they uh, this floor for give you uh, the fluorescence uh, emission. Uh, for example, yes, GFP is uh, uh, floor for, and uh, uh <coughs> usually uh, uh, group. Autofluorescence. Uh, I think GFP is uh, autofluorescence. Uh, uh, normally, you attach these green fluorescent proteins because they are highly fluorescent. And they, you have the, the ability to attach, they have to fix each of these proteins in this uh, part of the cell, in the nucleus, I don't know. And also, you can use different. Nowadays, there are many, many kinds. You will have with Marana a lecture about green fluorescent proteins. There are many, many kinds of new fluorescent, uh, green fluorescent proteins, or yellow fluorescent proteins, red fluorescent proteins, due to the fact that you need to differentiate between different parts of the cell. You attach one green fluorescent protein to this uh, specific component and another yellow fluorescent protein to other component. As, as you saw in, in some of the applications, you have some molecules in green, some molecules in red, for example, microtubules in, in, in green, f actin in red, it is it to do the fact that you use different uh, fluorescent proteins. Of course, you need to prepare the sample in this way. Is there any other question? Take profit, because this is an opportunity. So if you have any doubt or something, ask. Because you have some expert, you have the professor, and so on. So take profit, because this is a, a unique opportunity. Is there, a, a, I have a question. Is there anyone more working with these things Apart, uh, you are the only one. It seems that you are the only one. Okay. So, well, do you want to add something, or we can? Uh, I would like to add one point. <laughs> Stephen Hale received the Nobel Prize, but many years before, 
many years, I have nothing, many years before, Stephen Hale received the, the award from the ICO, the ICO prize. ICO is the International Commission for Optics, which is one, uh, the one who started with ICTP, this winter college, then Optical Society of America, SPIM, many other uh, institutions uh, <coughs> reached this uh, group. And he received this award, if I remember, in 2000 or 2001, but probably it's 2000, because we realized that I was in the committee that uh, analyzed the proposals, <laughs> selected the proposals, and we realized immediately that this depletion system of Stefan L was a very important proposal. And he received the ICO prize long before the Nobel Prize. Okay, this is just a point of uh, a story. <laughs> okay. So maybe we can have an interval a little bit longer than usual, but maybe some people can can take profit. Uh, of uh, speaking together, uh, going to the secretary, and so on. Yes. Okay? So see you at 11. At 11. 11? Okay. Okay. Everybody's coming. Uh, uh, about the about the, the selection of one uh, yeah. one molecules. Okay. Okay. When you when you put there.